just gonna slide this up like this and hit it with the heat gun and you got you like a really nice ghetto, literally Harbor Freight Fab waterproof connection. I won't come off. What up y'all, Jason back at you with another Monty video. By the look of that left rear, you can tell it's been a couple of days since I fiddled with this thing. And if you remember from the last video, the flooded video, I was doing some kind of testing with the wires and I found that the power wire to that distributor was grounded and also it really wasn't getting full voltage. Also when we ran at the one and the eight cylinder, didn't really seem like they were fine. Firing. So I did a spark test. It was a very faint spark. The camera wouldn't even pick it up. And the battery was really dead when I did it. I didn't redo it after the battery um, got charged because I figured I'd be moving on to kind of heavier diagnostics and repair. So today we're gonna be doing a project I've been wanting to do for a while. And that's rewiring the power for the distributor into sort of my little custom fuse bus. It runs off a, a 30 amp relay. And uh, I'll show you how to hook it up actually in that flood video. So check that out if you haven't already. Come on, check it out. I'll kind of show you what I'm working with. So this distributor is just a standard HEI. It's a, um, I can't remember what they call it, but I'll put the link in the description below. It, it's a MSD billet kind of drop in direct replacement for a late model HEI. And, um, since I've had it, I've replaced the um, the cap and the rotor and also that coil pack, which I've got for like 30 bucks. I was like, what the heck, I'll try it. I mean, it's just a coil and I'm not really ripping this thing too hard. So, and it ended up working. Unless, you know, this is my spark issue and it is a POS. The power to the distributor is just this little pink cable right here and it's original. And then this green one right here is, uh, that's my tack lead. That's what sends a signal to the tack. So you know how many RPMs you're turning, but I just have a little spade on that tack lead because the way uh, sort of it's wired from the factory is that pink wire that gives you power. It's got its own little clamp on its harness side. And then uh, the green wire for the tack has a little clamp, but I cut that back when I put my first tack in this thing. Um, most of these aftermarket coils and stuff I found, um, and also I was running a 6AL at the time I put that tack in there. The um, Whatever signal comes out of that HEI distributor gets rectified through some kind of little capacitor. And running it through the stock one, little capacitor, it didn't work. And straight wire, it didn't work. I think I actually blew the tack out, but that's neither here or there. So it's always been a struggle keeping that tack wire. And even though that, um, that spade connector is pretty tight, the rumbling of the engine will make it fall out here and there. What I came up with was this Amazon score right here. It's a harness that plugs right in and it offers you your green wire for your tack, your red wire for your power. One clip holds them both in. So you just need to make these connections, pop her in. I'm gonna just fuse this right to my tack. And then I'll add, you know, a couple feet to this red wire so I can get it around and kind of uh, dress it back behind the engine and put a spade connector on it for my bus. Four o'clock chance of rain at four. So lighting in the garage went from pretty bad to impossible. So we're gonna do our work in the kitchen like a real man. And if you found my channel through the uh, car vids, definitely check out some of my pizza vids. I love making pizza and I just figured if you like V8s, probably like carbs and cheese too. Really don't need any kind of crazy toolage for this, right? We're just pretty much splicing and putting these wires together. Um, I like these simple, kind of just little clamp style. This is what real electricians use. They don't use those T-Rex things or any kind of like auto gapping thing. You just stick it into the right size and do it. And, and you really don't want to be pulling on this thing like a tooth. You just kind of nip it around and then pull back a little bit and, and let the uh, let the stripper take that insulation off. So that way you end up with all of your strands. You don't want to be blowing out all your strands. You got less conductors, right? See, nice and clean, not missing any strands, not all torn up on the side here. You don't want to cut them too long too, man. Maybe like three eighths of an inch. That way uh, they fit into your butt connector nicely and where you clamp is sort of right here up against the insulation. You don't want the insulation up in the butt connector because uh, then you can't possibly clamp down hard enough on these. So definitely something to pay attention to to get your cuts good. Another thing that I'll do right before I go ahead and seal the deal on this is I'll slide my wire into my butt connector like this. 
Let me see if I can get to where you can see it. But like right there, you can see a little bit of the copper before that insulation, right? So it's always good to go a little bit longer. So I know I need to trim back maybe about an eighth of an inch on this. That's what having a really nice sharp pair of these will get you too. Also, if you have a hard time getting them in, put a little sort of clockwise twist, just a little bit. Don't go twisting them all around and then, uh, then kind of twist this on there and you'll get it in there. Now, another thing, pick yourself up a clamper, okay? For years, I played around uh, <laughs> doing this with uh, pliers, lineman's pliers, needle nose, vice grips, everything. You're not gonna get a secure crimp on this like you would with an actual crimper. I'll put a link in the description below. Can't get it on Amazon. Get on over to Harbor Freight. It's definitely worth its weight. And it's got a couple other little things. It's got little nippers at the end for cutting some wires and it will do several gauges and different style connectors. All right, I got my power wire right here. This is just uh, some 14 gauge marine grade wire I had from when I had a boat. And uh, I think marine grade might be the one to go with here. So pretty much same thing. Just gonna stick it, put it right into the 14. Boom, insulator comes right off. I think I about got the trim right. We'll go ahead and double check. And yeah, we do, so I'm gonna go ahead and crimp it. I also kind of just a little pet peeve, electrical work, you know, I like keeping it nice and clean. So I line, uh, I line that groove up with the groove on the other connection. Might be OCD, might just be good work. I'm not really sure. Quick little tug test. Uh, looks like everything's good. It's not falling apart. Also, I got the added protection of kind of these heat shrink connectors. They'll keep it dry and it'll also really lock these wires in so that way vibration won't affect them too much. I decided I'm gonna do something a little bit different than a, uh, a straight connection with the tack wire. Just because um, this is gonna plug in to the distributor. This will go to the tack. This will go to my block. And um, I wanna be able to take this whole harness out of the car if I need to. So I'd be able to do that by unclicking this from the distributor and pulling my spade connector on my bus on this end. Um, so this end, since I already have the female spade, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a male spade on this side. So it'll just plug right into the wires I already got under the hood. All right, for you noobs out there, I'm gonna spit y'all a little game. So uh, this is just like the crappiest, cheapest little butt connector they make, right? So I kind of counter that by putting some heat shrink on it, right? But see, it's always so hard with this, right? Because this heat shrink's not gonna go over this, especially once you squash this cheap little plastic piece out. Sometimes what I'll do with a wire is I'll put a layer of thinner heat shrink over the wire and then I'll build it up over the connector. But I mean, it all kind of depends on the connectors you're using and the gauges. So what I do with these is I just grab it and I get a pair of pliers and I just pull that plastic piece right off the end of that connector. Now I can just stick this right into my spade connector and crimp it. But don't forget to get your heat shrink. So I'm thinking this red stuff might work and we'll pre-cut it. I used to be an electrician and uh, some of the big jobs we would do, I, I did everything, but um, we would do fiber optics and we'd have to splice freaking 48 strands of fiber and you had to put a heat shrink tube on it before you fused it. And uh, yeah, we uh, did a lot of refusing. So you can see we got a nice little crimp on that. See how it kind of turned in both sides over that wire? And that's what that crimper is gonna give you, right? It's almost like a little die. That little tooth right there just chomps down, pushes her right on in there. Now we got our heat shrink. And we're just gonna slide this up like this and hit it with the heat gun. And you got you like a really nice ghetto, literally Harbor Freight Fab waterproof connection. That won't come off.
And even though it can be really hot if you got some uh, soft hands, once it's kind of gooey, I like to push those air bubbles out of these ones, really get it to stick. Because even though these blues are for 14 to 16 gauge, it's funny because a 14 gauge seems kind of uh, fat and a, and a 16 seems kind of thin, but it's the world we live in. Looks like that rain might've been a false flag. So back out at the car, I'm gonna go ahead and snap the harness in, kind of feed this wire around and see exactly how much length we need. Don't forget to bring a Sharpie so you can mark it. All right, I'm not even going to snap it in. It's going to be around there because I don't want to block y'all's camera view. And I actually do have a existing wire loom that's kind of coming up from where the bell housing is right here. So I'll probably feed my wire right down the distributor and right around to over here where my little power block is. So I think this should be about sufficient. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it. I could have just brought something out here to cut it but I didn't still kind of dodging a storm and I might actually have to change before I come out here again too, because Florida thin my blood out. Now I could have went out there and just uh, cut it right under the hood and slice it on like a real G. But uh, honestly, if you already got a place with the tools and everything you need laid out, the materials, it's just better to do it like that. Like we already know what's going to fit. So make those connections the best you can, not leaning over the hood. All righty, X marks the spot. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. We're going to repeat that same exact trick we did with the first one using a blue female spade connector. Cut this. Had a few inches on it, right? like roasting marshmallows man all right our custom uh ignition power harness is all built up i'm gonna go change into something warm we'll snap this in the car and light it off I know I said I was gonna test the coils and the plug wires and all that, but I actually think I'm gonna save that for another video and uh, we'll test this. I really just wanna see if the car turns on, see if the tack still works and um, really just kind of for y'all following along with the project and just sort of issues at large. We'll see if maybe um, that was the issue. So that way, if you are combating sort of something like that, um, maybe this is what did it, let's see.
All right, so I turned it off and uh, it's pretty much same old, same old. I do have a typo. It wasn't the one and the eight, it was the two and the seven or the cylinders that are having the issue. And kind of being a thoroughbred tinker or mechanic, I really just couldn't end the night without at least knowing that um, like that cylinder's uh, not damaged or the pistons all shattered to bits because uh, there was water in there and I fired it up. So I pulled the plug, I, uh, I did uh, the spark plug test again on the, um, on the number two cylinder. And although the spark, you know, at first wasn't quite consistent, it did kind of level out and start firing. So I knew that wasn't an issue. Pulled the plug out, it really wasn't that carved. And um, did a compression test, ended up with like just shy of 150 PSI. So then I figured I'd go over to a known working cylinder. So I went to cylinder number one, uh, pulled the plug out. The plug was noticeably carbed. Um, I'm still trying to get this carburetor dialed in. Really hasn't had much time on the streets. It's just been turning on with the choke on and idling. So I'm not really tripping too hard about the carved up plugs. I still got to get the timing done and, and some things like that. So please make sure if you like these kind of projects that you do subscribe. Um, it really helps me out a lot. Gets this kind of videos in front of more people and Maybe one day I'll have enough money to really kind of go ham on these projects. But on the known working cylinder, the pressures were just about the same. So I don't think there's any issue with that. So sort of what I'm kind of deducing from all this, and let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Since that working cylinder is super carved up and the not working cylinder isn't carved up, I'm thinking that it's something with the intake valve. I think uh, I either have a stuck lifter or the rocker arm came off, which it didn't make that much noise, or the valve lashes off, or the retaining nut backed off, something like that happened. So the next video, we'll be peeling off these valve covers, and I guess uh, I'm doing a tune-up. Make sure y'all tune in. Peace.